So when my brother's kidneys was failing and I was living with him and I visually got to see his body shut down, mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to step up and give my kidney to him. And when I found out that I was a match, three out of six antigens, we scheduled the surgery for the next available. And that was two weeks later. And he lives and he breathes the rain that's up. No. And you, you yeah. gave your I gave, brother I gave him my kidney. kidney. I gave him my kidney. And he lives. He lives and I would do it again if I could. I'm Dr. Larry Burchette and as I see every day in the ER, life can change in a moment. On this show we tell the stories that matter most after which we are never the same. We have a very special guest today, Karina Christmas, Hi. children's book author. Yes. Hello, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Of course. Thank you for having me. I met you through Trek, who was just on the show, through Kai. We were at their mutual friend Buck's jewelry store opening in yeah. Venice. And um, we're going to talk about some interesting things today. Okay. Right? Yes. Children's well, book yes. author. Children's author, you're going to read us a story that you wrote. <laughs> yes. That's going to be fun. It's five minutes. We're going to do that in a minute. Okay. Um, you sell live Christmas trees. Yes. Like where you don't cut the tree down, but it's... It's still in its pot. Yes. I've never heard of that before. We're Isn't gonna it ingenious? About... It is. I. It's, yeah. It seems like the next, <laughs> instead of just replanting Christmas trees. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Um... Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then let's get into your moment. Okay, a little bit about myself. Ah. I'm the last out of nine kids. I'm from the Virgin Islands, St. Croix specifically. Um, I moved to the States a long, long time ago, um, and I love tech. I'm a big fan of art and technology. Technology? Mm -hmm. What do you love about tech? Anything that I... Oh. Many, many, many things. Um, one, I love that it's logical. I love that it's innovative. I love that you can take any issue and apply, I feel, if you just apply tech with it, um, probably makes it better. So, for instance, do you want to hear? A Give examples, things? please. Okay, because I'm always. Yes, this is interesting. Okay, because I'm always thinking. So, my last concept that I wrote about, um, which didn't get me accepted into this program, it's called LIAR. It's an acronym, L-I-A-R, mm -hmm. Life in Augmented Reality. And I thought of the concept because, as I'm sure you know, because you're single as well, because I'm single. So the rate of um, single people have been climbing. So you have a lot of people who are not getting married or getting married and divorced or mm. just having a hard time finding that significant other. Mm. So I believe that sometime in the near future, your mobile device will become your, I mean, it already is. It's your best friend. It's your- My girlfriend. Your personal assistant. You sleep, I sleep with my phone. Sometimes I wake up and I'm holding my phone. I don't want to go in that direction more. It's okay. You might, but everyone else is. And so I wanted to develop a concept where you can give your AI a face and a personality. And then with the use of, um, drones if you're outside but let's say that you're inside there's this glass that you can have your walls your interior walls made out of and then it's basically am i losing you no i'm with okay. you i <laughs> okay. feel like you're gonna so, it's gonna it's a hologram yes. so imagine like in there's star wars there's a movie that i saw that had this kind of a um, thing star wars no Help me Obi -Wan Kenobi, you're my, no, no i mm. feel like it was um oh, oh her i never saw yes. her yes i never saw her but i don't think she had a body with what was the guy's name um, joaquin um, phoenix Oh, no. no wasn't I wasn't that one. I did see that one, but I'm thinking of, um, oh, what are these guys' names? It's not Ryan Reynolds. Uh, come on, throw out some names. Gosling. Gosling. Do you know what movie? Uh -huh. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you're talking about Blade Runner 2049. Yes. What? The new Blade no. Runner movie. Oh, are you kidding me? That was a horrible movie, by the way. But do you know the thing I'm talking about? His, like, partner girlfriend was a hologram. His partner, girlfriend, I don't remember that. I just remember that he wasn't right? human. Right. That I remember he Nick. was. Yeah, he was a robot. He was a robot, yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> this, is not, this is the beginning of the movie. <laughs> no, it's the beginning of the movie. Uh, no, that's just what you don't. Most people uh, don't even. Uh, you can't uh, say anymore. Yeah, most people didn't know that, but no. 
No. So, okay, in our future, we'll probably have, because there's a company in Texas that was trying to get his permit to have a sex brothel, a sex robot brothel. Of course, the city was like, no, 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 too progressive, no, no. This one therapist- Sex robot brothel. Sex robot brothel, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Because um, I forgot the name of, you can buy a sex robot that looks, I don't know why they keep on making her look like some hooker on the street. <laughs> why don't can, we make her look like, like a nice girl? Yeah, or like Jennifer Lopez. That you find at <laughs> church. No, no. I'm not saying to go to that extreme, but you don't have to make her look like a $2 broke whore, you know, that you... No, sure. Yeah, because if you can have sex you with can, anybody that you want... You can make her look like whatever. Exactly. Okay, so your idea okay. is, tell yes. me more about Liar. Okay, so Liar is where your mobile device, so your AI, you can... Um, like Alexa, but you're giving it a face? Yes, a body. And because we... And have, a body. Yes. But it's a hologram. It's a hologram. Yes. I feel like you should have the listeners sign an NDA. Oh, well... You're kind of giving the idea away. Well, I applied to um, my favorite... There are no longer my favorite... Um, <laughs> what's that? They're not, they're not a gaming studio. Magic Leap. So I used to be in love with Magic Leap. And if you are a science fiction nerd like myself, you probably know um, Neil Stevenson. He became their futurologist like five years ago. Love him. He wrote the book Snow Crash, Diamond Age... And I was like, oh, that's interesting that a gaming company would have a science fiction author as a futurologist. Then they went dark. Then I looked up their patents on Google. I'm like, wait a second, this is not games. And then when they <laughs> launched back live, they're trying to become the AR um, platform. Now, a lot of people, if you don't know augmented reality, it's better than virtual reality. I think VR is a Augmented reality. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between augmented and virtual reality? When okay. I think about, okay. you just set me up and I okay. walked into it. I think about virtual reality mm -hmm. as you put on the goggles yep. and you're looking around and it feels like you're in the simulated world Correct. or whatever. What does augmented mean? So virtual reality, um, it takes you out of your real world and your mind perceives that world as fake. No matter how much realistic that they can make it look, your mind will never accept that as reality. V um, AR is where it enhances your reality. So VR, your mm -hmm. mind will never think that it, you still know it's kind of VR. Correct. That's what you mean, okay. Yeah, and it's old technology. It's been around since I want to say the late 80s, early 90s, but no one was ready for it. But now that you have, um, I like to call people, what do you call it when you don't want to stip, like um, Apple? Even though they have like the next Apple, let's say they have Apple 15. I know that they don't, but let's yeah. just say that they had Apple 15. They won't skip 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 because you as a consumer, they right. want they you to Right, they want to line it up yeah. so you keep buying. You keep buying. Yeah. So um, I feel uh, at least six, seven years ago when I took a three-day seminar aboard Queen, the Queen Mary, when I learned about AR because I never knew AR existed, mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh, why are we still messing around with VR? Like, why? Um, because it, I, then I did research and I found out that it was old technology that came out two, de two decades before and it didn't grab, it, no, it didn't get, it wasn't caught on by the masses. So, so what is AR? I still don't know so what it AR is. So AR is that you can use anything that has, um, a camera on there, uh, your phone, um, if you're a gamer, I'm sure, uh, what is that? Play, is it PlayStation? I forgot which PlayStation has it, but okay. where you can take anything that has camera vision, put it up anywhere. Let's say that this is a game and like we're in zombie apocalypse and that's like, oh my God, is there, I mean, um, you put up your phone and let's just say in your space, a zombie is right there. Obviously the zombie is not really there. Okay. Maybe you don't want to use entertainment because it didn't um, catch on. I, Am I putting the goggles on? No. So <laughs> there is a company, it's not Oculus. Um, I forgot the name of it where it's a clear visor and they use it in the medical field because that's who usually uses any technology first, government okay. or medical. Okay. So it's where, um, let's say that this was, I don't know, because you're the doctor, so I won't say anything that's uh, doctor related. Let's yeah, say, but you're really smart. I had no idea you say, were this tech smart. Hold on, let's say it's at the grocery store. Let's say it's an app for the grocery store. And no, you don't have your visor on because again, I think most people don't want anything on their face. I wear glasses, but I, I'm wearing contacts. I don't ever wear glasses. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the future we'll get one of those Terminator things. 
But <laughs> in the meantime, let's say you have your phone and you're in the grocery store and you're on this app that can tell you um, if you just put your screen up on the produce section, okay. then it'll, it will um, recognize an apple, an orange, a banana, and let's say the app is supposed to give you the nutritional value. Okay. Um, that's is this really like Google Glasses? Line. So what Google Glass was... I feel like Google Glasses was so a Google similar Glass thing. So Google Glass was a, a little... joke. So oh. I was able, because they released it to um, a few engineers. And so when I was at this tech event, there was an engineer who had one, and he was such a jerk, but he allowed me to try it on. You know what that, you know what Google Glass is? No. It's basically your computer screen through one eye that's about this size. It's stupid, and so it's, it's still 2D. Like, it's not like the Terminator thing. No, not yet. So you got this visor thing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. I d and I don't want to spend too much, actually, no, like, I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. Tell, uh, tell me, what, it, what is it? Does anybody know what AR is? I'm trying to understand what that is. It's, Aug it's augmented reality. It enhances your reality with multiple overlays. Um, so I'm wearing this thing, and it's my reality, and then it looks like there's a zombie in there? What's the movie that Tom Cruise was in a long, long time ago? Was it Minority Report? Yes. Yeah, they had a lot of about that. Remember when he was in the mall and he looked at something on the wall and was like, "Oh, Mister Something, uh, get a get some go to Radio Shack." It identified him. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so liar is just um, yeah, just a face for your AI. Yeah. Because how? how Let me ask okay, you one sure. question about okay. this, and then okay. I want to. I want to get to your moment. Okay. Um, and it's a big picture question. <clears throat> All right. You sound it sounded you sounded excited by the idea to have your phone that you sleep with. You said <laughs> have a face. My love and my best friend. Yeah, that creeped me out. <laughs> okay. And I feel like my relationship with my phone mm -hmm. is one where I need to get it out of my bed and okay. less. Okay. In my life, and I don't, I, I don't want it to occupy a space that should be for a human being. Okay. All right. What's your question? Why do you want that with your phone? I don't understand. Um, why do I want that with my phone? Yeah. Um. Well, why do I want a face for my phone? Yeah. Well, we put faces on everything. Your dog has a face, your emoji, or your broji, or whatever that thing is. I don't even know. That has a face, or it's a caricature of you in your virtual world. You want to humanize your phone a little Your more. phone is already humanized. You want it more. Well, yes. And this is not, like, I'm not saying anything that's crazy. I want to get rid of my phone. <laughs> well, there's no going back. Because now your phone is something so much more than a phone. Right. It's your wallet. It's, it's a chain. It's a, it's a cage. Is it? The way that I use it, probably. Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, you can't have sex with your phone. But what <laughs> if you could? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, As but, your yeah. robot brothel fellow. Yeah. I mean, and, are, and they make... Uh, if you didn't want to go that uh, radical, they make um, sex toys where your partner could be in Europe, and they're manual, they're operating the I, toy. I guess my, I, I guess I feel like it's like an easy way out to be like, oh man, I'm not very social. I'm well, most get people laid aren't. A lot, like of us, a lot of people are but single. Then, but then, like, it's it's like, guys, then we need to. You know, nothing replaces human contact and like. No, nothing will. Learning how to whatever and touch. so I, yeah. Unless you go to that robot hotel in Tokyo. <laughs> no, it's a 70 room hotel in Tokyo that you can go to. And they, I'm sure they're, um, without them knowing, I'm sure they're researching, because a hotel, you need human contact to check you in or maybe bring you food. Um, so I'm sure they're studying that. And I'm thinking that they're finding out that you can do without a human, not in everything, but. I don't want to do without a human. I don't either. Are we there yet? No, but I think in the next 10, 15 years we might be. I know I'm picky, but I'm not ready to give up that there's some girl out there for me and I don't need to turn to a robot that I can build. Okay. The perfect one. But let's say that you met You can't thing. find her in reality. She's probably a pain in the ass, but you can build the perfect robot woman. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could sell yeah. that would be sell yeah. the perfect man. I Give mean, me a would break. you? Would, how would you know? I mean, obviously we're not there yet. Uh, but what if it she's looked like annoying me? me. <laughs> Can we redo the redo the programming, please? This is not what I ordered. Actually, it's exactly what you ordered. Well, it's time for an upgrade, right? You know, yeah. Like... Or delete her memory and start over. <laughs> Okay, with that, <laughs> yeah. A, okay. I've come to learn you're incredibly intelligent, and I respect wow. that. Thank you. B, you've got this whole tech side of you that is very interesting. I'm always trying to solve problems with some algorithm. And it sounds like right. there's an artist side to you as well. Yes, it's STEAM, not STEM. I don't know what that means. Science. <laughs> um, I've added art in, in STEM. Because I believe that art, I'm, I'm, I don't know, does it, does it mimic life? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. I think you're like so much smarter than I am. No. And no, because what is it? It's science, tech, engineering, plan. and math. But now it has art for STEAM. You created another acronym? Is that what that was? I don't was? think I created it. I STEM? just included it okay. into STEM. Yeah. Excellent. So. Let's get to your moment. Yeah. <laughs> How's that for a segue? Okay. <laughs> what moment? The moment that I became a superhero? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you want to have me pick up? I love that the people don't even know what we're talking about. Oh. Um, but they will. They will. You will reveal it to them. Where did you get this idea? To save a life? <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Um, so it wasn't my idea. I want to say it must have been like my sophomore or junior year in college. My brother was going through, um, I wouldn't say it was kidney failure, but stuff was happening. And I was like, oh, I'll just go in and just see if I'm the same blood type because who knows, you know, I might not even be an option. And it turned out we were the same blood type. Your brother had some kidney problems. Yes. They never found out why or where it stemmed from. How old was he? Uh, at the time, he was 45. Okay. And you were college, 20. Well, oh, at the time when he found out, I was probably, I don't know, 21. Because you're the youngest of nine. I'm the youngest so is of this nine. like your oldest brother? Yeah, he's or? two of nine. I'm nine of nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also known as my second dad. My dad calls him my second dad, and that's all because... Because there's that much space between you, 20 years or that whatever. That much space, yeah. 15 years. Um, I, I remember as a kid, I would hang out with him a lot. Like, I loved my brother even as a baby. Like, I have memories. So of you guys were really close. Are, were you the closest to him of all your siblings? When I was younger? In general, yeah. No, I was closer with the last set of four. Because my mom had a first set of five, yeah. and then she had a two-year break break <laughs> <laughs> and then she had her last set of four so i was closest to the last set of four okay and then as i got older because by the time i was cognizant of like what was you know where i was able to communicate and hang out with my brother he was already in college but he would come home for college you know got it yeah um so it wasn't so he's uh, 40 something and he's having some kidney problems yes. Never, we didn't know why don't know why wasn't high blood pressure and wasn't high blood pressure wasn't no he eats really weird. well he's an amazing chef next to my mom so i never figured that out huh? never figured it out i felt like i was on like um house i don't know if anybody yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah trying to, like, mystery medical yeah, mystery medical mystery they think because uh, he had um not tell his business, but I think he would wet yeah. his bed when he was, um, you know, like a teenager. Yeah. And they think, looking back, when they were looking at everything, that it probably started when he was that young and not when he mm. was older. Um, but again, they still couldn't figure it out. But there are still it, there's still so many things that we, sometimes people have kidney problems, liver, whatever, <coughs> and there's no cause. There's no identifiable reason why somebody gets it. Yeah. It's unknown. Yeah, um, so I got checked out. I'm A positive, A plus, and um, he didn't need it at the time, but it was just for me like, okay, at least I'm a, a blood type match. Um, and then it wasn't until 2010 that after talking to his doctors and they told him that, of course, if he had a, 
a donor, it would be better for him to get the surgery before he goes on dialysis. And so I lived with him in Long Beach because he moved, um, I think my brother was living in Florida at the time and he moved to <laughs> the West Coast. He loves it, but he knows I love living out here. So he moved out here and I lived with him and it was not, it was a good time, but I've never seen a body shut down like visually see a body shut down. There was times when he would just be bloated. Like not <laughs> that talk you know, about my brother, but he's a good looking man, tall. Like his face would be swollen. All of it is swollen. Like yeah. his lips are swollen to the point where he wouldn't go out or do anything because obviously he was depressed. Um, so his kidneys weren't working. He was holding on to fluid and his whole body was swelling because of me. his kidneys. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is right? Yeah. Right. Sounds right. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things the kidneys do is literally you pee, you take off fluid. You know, you drink water. Well, your kidneys are what... And if they don't the work, bladder. then fluid builds, builds up, up and it looks like that. Oh, I didn't know that. No, that was the cause of that. There was also a smell. I, I don't know. I will never forget it. But it just smelled like death. I never mm. told my brother that. This is the first time I'm like... This is not really this. a private podcast. It's okay. I mean, okay. I'm honest with my brother. Okay. You know, we have to talk- make sure you're comfortable. <laughs> so. I never really told my I brother this, this but... but... No, he's fine. We're, op we're an open family. Okay. There's like, I love him. Like, I'm never going to say anything that's going to hurt him. Okay. Because it's probably true. The only reason I didn't tell him was because I know that he was already going through his own stuff that I don't need to add you know, any... So, so you could, I think what you're trying to say is you could watch him getting sicker right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. And that, of course, that hurt me. There were times when I cried, but I didn't let him see that because, mm. you know... Why not? Why didn't you let him see that? I don't know. I don't know. Afraid it would be hard for him or... Yeah. And that's my brother. Or he's my older brother. Mm. Like, I could never... I mean, he didn't have to ask me when it came time, even before he moved to California. He didn't have to ask me. Like, I went in and I, uh, I would, I tell him I would never do this again, but I lie, I lie. I would, I would, I would keep saving his life many times over. But um, the process of getting checked, so besides going to see, um, was that a, psych, a psychologist? Yeah. They have to make sure that they're sane. So, oh, tell me. Let's tell him what you did. And then you can tell us more about the process. Oh, have I not said anything yet? I don't think we've spelled it out. <laughs> what did you do for your brother? Oh, I donated my kidney. You gave your brother your, one of your two kidneys. Yes. To save his life. Yes. God, you told me that. And I, I don't know that I've ever met. There was, that's, I met one other person who's been an organ donor who oh. hasn't died, who is alive and voluntarily. Gave their organ? Which yeah. organ? Kidney. Kidney. This guy gave it to a random. He was wow. one of my attending doctors See, in Martinez, and I was like, no way. That's more applauding. When somebody can do it for a stranger. I've heard people say, oh, I wouldn't even do that for my sister. I'm like, you're crazy. Of course you would. You would get over whatever I issues would, you might have. I, like, I was thinking, about, we were talking about this today before you came on, and the question was, who would you donate a kidney for? Oh, would you guys say? And I was like, I don't know that I would give a kidney to anybody. Yes, you I, would. I would give it, I would give one to my daughter. That's like the natural first thing that I think of is if mm -hmm. she really needed that and her, and her life depended on it, I would do that. But the honest truth is, I mean, we all want to, everybody wants to pretend that we, we would be like you, right? I would, oh, if the right, whatever, I would be like you. But let's be real. Yeah, really? No way. Would you give it to your ex-wife? I wasn't married. Oh, would you yeah, give we it, weren't married. Would you give it to your, your daughter's mother if she, she needed it? She's got a husband now that could be <laughs> his... Well, what if he wasn't a match? She's, I'm sure they're a match. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. I'm sure they're a match. I would give it to my... <laughs> okay. I would... I probably would give it to my daughter. I... The honest truth is, and hate me or not, I think I'm speaking some truth for a lot of people, I don't think I would give it to anybody else. I'm just telling, I'm just saying that. Okay. No, so ju I, no judgment here. Whatever, that's me. We were talking yeah. about that. And it yeah. goes to everybody, like, everybody listening, like, really? Who would you give a kidney for? Would you give a kidney for anybody? 
So I think it is a remarkable thing. So anyway, yes. Let's so let so tell me a little bit about the process. Okay. You were talking about so your brother, he's getting sicker in front of you. Mm -hmm. You know he's got kidney failure and mm -hmm. it, it's getting worse. Turns out you're a blood type match. I don't know much about the kidney transplant process okay. and finding a match and all of that stuff. But I'm also curious about you and when you made the decision, because I think this, I'm wondering if this is your moment, when you're like, yes, I'm going to give him this kidney. I wish that I could look back and remember that moment I knew it when I was in college because I went in and, and I at least got checked to see if we were a blood match. Um, and you knew then, you're like, if the time comes, I, I would, would do I this. I would, yeah. So it was yeah. kind of like that was the first initial thing in your mind where yeah. you're like, okay, maybe. Yeah, and none of my, it's amazing when you think you have so many people, especially when you come from a big family. Oh, I've got so many people to rely on. Jack Joe, I don't have any brothers named Jack or Joe, but um, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But um, mo most of my siblings did not get tested, even when my brother was in kidney failure. They didn't even want to give the option. Was anybody else a match? I know that another sister of mine, she <coughs> a positive. Is it only a blood type match that they need? No. It's no. It's no, got to be you, more specific. You have than to that. match um, one out of six antigens. You could and probably some tell me. Too. Yeah. So I matched three out of six. And that's all it needed. One out of six, and they'll take it. So. And you didn't, at some point, fear for your life going through the procedure, or I think the thing that I think of as a doctor is, well, what if I have blood pressure problems or some problems later, and the Somehow there's some long-term consequence because I don't have my other kidney. I'm going to take you through the story, not really quick, but I want to get to that because there is something there that came up. So, okay, so the six, I was not match, yes. Went to see a psychologist because they had to determine if I was sane. And they determined, of course, I was sane. Then after that... Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a very sane human We've being. talked to you for a few <laughs> no, minutes already, I'm, I'm and really I want to see logical. that psychologist report. I'm, like, I'm really logical. I was kind of scared that they would <laughs> deem me unfit, but I was like, no, what are you talking about? You're, you're normal, um, as normal could be. Um, so after that was done... Just just <laughs> give me that report just for fun. Yeah, let me no, see. No, I'm sure there were... <laughs> no, I remember going in. It was I'm at kidding. UCLA. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> um, then after that, I had to do. You could probably tell them better. It's where they inject you with. Is it iodine? It's probably not iodine, but it's some um, dark yeah. liquid. Yeah, you'd contrast. Yeah, so, so then they can see. To scan. Correct. They're looking for cancer. Oh, or, I did not know that. Well, they're, you said they scanned their whole body. Yeah, not exactly. just your kidneys. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, as soon as the guy was like, oh, you're going to feel the sensation that you need to pee or you're peeing yourself, but you're not. What he did not tell me was as soon as mm -hmm. that thing hit my bloodstream, mm -hmm. my whole body was on fire. Oh, so like you just, had a little reaction to the contrast. A little liquid fire. Yeah. Um, but everything came back normal. No, no STDs, no cancer. Good. I, I was in perfect health. The only thing was, again, um, young and if I want kids. And I was like, ah, moving on. Um, I'm curious, you know, I delivered a bunch of babies sure. and, and, and I'm, I don't know, it's like I want to look this up, like how would only have one kidney change your pregnancy? Yeah, I don't know. So I'm not sure about that. I'm curious yeah. about that. But anyway. Reveal. Okay, so you went through the testing. Mm -hmm. Did, All your stuff is good. Some psychologist says you're sane. Yes. And you're ready to go. I'm ready to go. So the next thing was um, selecting a day. Oh, you know, on the calendar, choosing No, how, oh, yeah. how much time was there between when they said, hey, we need to do this, okay. and, you know, is this like, we need to do it in a couple weeks, six months? So What was the time super frame? Super quick. Like, I want to say two weeks we were scheduled for surgery. So it's like his kidney function got worse and worse and worse, and it was like, okay, you're about to need dialysis. Yep. Let's do the transplant. Yes. And then I didn't think it was going to be two weeks. I think I should have. The only regret that I did have, and this might be a little bit <coughs> personal for everybody in the room, unfortunately, I didn't check my um, my period <coughs> calendar, my period calendar. Yeah. Because if I did, I would have scheduled it for a different time. But as luck would have it, like my period came like the day after surgery. 
So there I still have the catheter and you can't pee and then I'm bleeding. And I'm like, yeah. this is not, this ideal. is not ideal. Yeah. But um, it's all right. Yeah, it was fine. But um, I'm jumping ahead. I wanted to say, so the on only complications that I had was that surgery was supposed to take, I don't know, four hours. I already had it in my mind. Okay, we, we, clocked, we checked in at six. We went in at nine. I'll be out right, roughly around one o'clock or two o'clock. Um, and of course, I, my brother's in his bed. I say bye because they take me out first. I didn't know how, you know in the movies when they yeah. give you, what do they give you to not general, general anesthesia? General anesthesia, yeah. sure. I thought, you know, they were like, oh, count back from 10. I think I only got to eight. Yeah. And it was like lights out, did not dream. Um, I don't know what happens when you die or what happens if you're in a coma, but all I saw was black and yeah. I don't remember anything. There's yeah. that no account for time. Um, you were out. I was out. Uh, surgery took longer than expected. They call my baby the kidney baby. All the doctors, they call it the, the baby kidney. They've never seen a kidney that little. small. It was so tiny. but um, Healthy, just small. Healthy, but small. My intestines were pressed up against it, so that took longer because obviously they didn't want to cut through anything. Sure. And because they had me under then longer, they had complications waking me up. And then when they did wake me up, I was in so much pain that they were like, we have to put her under. Um, so by the time I woke up, I knew it was nighttime. I just knew it. I heard the nurses talking and I was just panicking because mm -hmm. something didn't feel right. I just knew the time, mm -hmm. not like you can see sun through the hospital, but yeah. um, I just knew it was later than what it was supposed to be. But I was wondering if he was okay. Yeah. And they were like, oh yeah, he's fine. He's already awake. He's in his room. I'm like, what? He was better, faster than... The surgeon said you. as soon as they connected, his body started producing urine like immediately. I was like, wow. wow. Plug in a perfect kidney. Yeah, plug it in. Fixes him. Yeah, so now he has three. So they left his other ones in. They always do. They never take out kidneys. So we met one guy who was Makes coming sense. in. He had five. I was like, wow, you had... Two, you five? Had, he had five kidneys. What? I don't even know. I was like, how many people have done Sometimes Obviously anatomically three. when you're born, you can have extra no, little I've weirdos. I've heard about that. He got Sometimes you have three. Three extras? No, they put, he's had three donations. Is that he's a word had, for donors? Yeah. 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 Three donations. Yeah. That's a lot of donations. That's a lot of donations. And I'm like, who you have, have belly full of kidneys? Obviously people that he Never knows and loves. Because usually you're on that donor list for a while. And the greatest thing that the doctor was telling my brother was like, luckily you had a match. Of course, there is the process where you can do a swap. So let's say somebody on the East Coast, um, I have the same blood type as them. Oh, I see. We could have swapped if organs. You, you're, their family matched yours yeah. and you guys. I see. Swap. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh, the other complication that I forgot was that should I ever go into kidney failure? Because that's... A possibility to sure. have one. I'm on top of the donor list because I donated, oh. and they look really highly upon that. I should when you hope save so. a life, they want to save your life too. That ought to be okay. Well, that makes me feel a little safer. Yeah. About that, right? More reason to give, Larry. Yeah, more reasons to give. Well, in that case. Yeah, she gets one too. Okay. <laughs> What's hold? Hold on. Yeah. I know. I know. Let's not rush into it. Right. I'll let you know. Um. Yeah, but he was moving around. Like, I remember he came to visit me in my hotel in my hotel room. He came to visit me in my room. And I'm like, what? He even told me because I was in pain. And he was like, why don't you just get them to give you more morphine? And then I told him, because I was so afraid because I smoked cannabis. And the whole rule was that if I go through with this donation, that they would check me to, to make sure that I wasn't you know and the doctor was like oh if we find that you do we won't you know do the surgery so i was why i don't know i think maybe they were just you seeing if i could stick marijuana. to a regimen because of the for the surgery no i don't think it was the surgery i think maybe it was seeing that... if the sh if i patient yeah oh, could, could be take, compliant or yeah something? and take hmm. yeah Although the nutritionist who was supposed to come and see me after surgery never saw her. Did, did you have to do anything in preparation for this? Take any medications? <laughs> no or... medication, but fast and take a cleanse. Yeah, which just was... for your intestines or whatever. Okay. Yeah, because I guess they don't want you shitting out on the Good word. table um, or something. So. I don't know. 
what happens yeah, when you want you're... your intestines empty and just yeah. in case something happens and you don't want yeah. cook poo in there to contaminate. Yeah. So. Um, so it's, you're recovering after the surgery. Mm-hmm. How did you feel? The, <laughs> I can tell you the first couple moments after surgery when I got in my room and my family and loved ones started to come in, I was a little bit vain. I was a little vain because I, I know my lips were all chapped and and because I could feel it. So I was like, before anybody entered, uh, my mom had to come and like make me present. I don't know why I was concerned about that because I just got out of surgery, sure. but whatever. Um, no, I feel like after my brother told me about that, about, yeah, let him, it's just, a, you know more than I do, but it's just a check for the hospital. She wants morphine. Ding, 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 ding. So <laughs> I was like, really? He was like, yeah, if you're in pain, just let him know. Yeah, I mean, it's what, yeah, it's what's, you're in pain. Yeah, what it's there for. For, for this, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Um, did, did you, did you have, after you went through with it, did you have any regrets? Like, were you like, did you have a moment where you're like, Oh my God, I want my kidney back. No. <laughs> you know, like, no. Oh, was this the right thing? No, or, I think it, it found its right home. I was happy my brother had my kidney and I feel more connected to him. I think our relationship is was already strong, um, but like me and my brother were tight. Like, I think what was interesting was seeing his the relationship with his, was well, his wife now because I think when he was her, she was his girlfriend, because <laughs> we lived together, I think mm. there was, uh, she couldn't understand, because my family is so loving, like, which I don't necessarily see. Granted, America is different from the West Indies, but um, she didn't understand it because I've seen her and her family, she's from France, they're not, they're not, it's French lot, wouldn't do it. It's a lot of competition. Like, it can't just be, you're who you are, I'm who I am. That's it. You know, I love yeah. you. You know, my mom Sibling always. Sibling rivalries. Correct. That's yeah. What most people have, and I've never felt that with any of my siblings. When I was young, my dad always said that he took care of the first set of five. So if anything should happen to him or his wife, they can take care of the last set of four. Wow. Um, even to this day, my brother doesn't have to, but he's like, "Oh, you want to come to France? We're going." We're like, like, "Hell yeah." You got my ticket, right? Without a question. Which is, it's not a monetary thing. And I did crack a joke in the hospital where I was like, oh yeah, he's paying me 250 for this. Dr. Bill was our surgeon and he was like, you know, I know you're just joking, but um, it, normally if I heard that, it's I would have to report to it. It's for, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I didn't, I, I don't know. You know, I'm like, no, I would never charge I was just kidding. a sibling. <laughs> I still want the money. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Okay, that's 10,000. No, um, yeah, no. It, my brother being here to share my life with for as long as I'm here, I'm gonna keep him around. Like, you don't get wow. to go, not yet, no. That's incredible. Yeah, and his wife now understands that that's the love that we have. It's not a love that's stronger than her love for him or their love for each other. It's a different kind of love, but again, like, are, are you, do you think it's a cultural thing from where you're from, or is it a unique thing Absolutely. with your family? I think it's a cultural thing, and I think my family is unique. Yeah. You know, my mom is, you know, they're island people, down island, as you, as they are called on my island, because my parents are from another island. Um, yeah, my mom is the type of person, she calls me crying, oh my God, oh my God, bawling. I'm like, mom, what's wrong? And my dad cut down, we call it a frangy panji tree, but it's that flower in Hawaii that you see. I don't know what that flower is really called, but in mm. St. Croix, Frangie Panji. Yeah. And my dad chopped down the Frangie Panji tree and he was bawling. And my dad got on the phone and he was like, the tree was sick. What do you want me to do? And I'm like, oh my God, these are my parents calling me because somebody's chopping down a tree. You know, I, I wouldn't disagree that there's something cultural or even unique in your family regarding this kind of giving, which is exceptional. Um, but I would point out, you said this, not all of your family got tested too. Correct. So I think, I think part of it is you. Yeah. You know, I'm the too. mediator. I'm not, I'm called a mediator in my family. I'm very, I like, I, I don't judge. I try to listen. I try to, yeah, my, I think according to my parents, I think I'm going to be the one that keeps my family together when they're gone. 
And I talk about death with my parents all the time because... How old are they? Uh, my dad is 76. They're both and, still here. Yeah. And my mom is... Se- oh, I don't want to say. Sorry, mom. <laughs> She's uh, a Your woman mom's. in her 20s, that lady. She's 29. <laughs> She's 29. Good for her. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I just... I've, you know, I've been thinking about this story since you told me, and I was so impressed. <clears throat> um, I think it is really remarkable and an exceptional thing. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if you can save a life, I hope people would save a life. I work at a restaurant. Unfortunately, there was a person who suffered a heart attack on Thanksgiving Day, and there was a nurse who was sitting at a different table, as we later found out she was a nurse, she did not stop giving compressions on that guy. It took the ambulance, I think, 13 to 14 minutes to get to us. Mm. I'm like, man, that's who you want around, that even a stranger won't give up on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or a robot. Stop. <laughs> uh, the robot you brought the <laughs> robot back? I did, just in case. Here I human, am. Just in case I'm, I human connection. I'm getting all emotional <laughs> with the human stories <laughs> of sacrifice. <laughs> sacrifice. And this is the same woman who's like, just in we case. need to have robot brothels where you can have sex with your phone. And I'm just like, well, what? Well, you're the one that was telling me you wouldn't, you know, just in case for the people who don't want to, there is this <laughs> plan B. Like, you what know? are you talking about? In case about? a human can't come oh through, my God. the robot will. Yeah. Um, so your brother, well, let's finish your bro- yes. the brother's story. And I want to talk about your trees, your okay. Christmas trees. So your brother's fine. My brother's fine. I mean, his kidney is functioning well. Kidney's functioning well. He's on a bunch of drugs to keep it from getting rejected. That's that's the one thing. And he's like living a normal life. Living a normal life. Like this is a happy story. And it's been how many years? Uh, 33. (coughs) Uh, No, you didn't donate your kidney 33 years ago. I did it. Um, It's been. I'm not trying to figure out how old you are. No, 2013. Okay, so so it's been six, seven years, whatever. Or was it 14? Five, six, seven years. Yeah, one or so. of those. So okay. Five years. So yeah. he's been doing well for that yeah, many years. Yeah, his daughter years. is five, so five years. Yeah. God, that's crazy. So, it, I mean, how? And it, he's he's a healthy guy because I know that uh, everyone was saying he, that there is a lifespan on the organ yeah. because you are always taking that medication. Of course, yeah. medication isn't always. It's meant to keep him alive, but it's not good for the body. You know, over. Um, what is the lifespan of a donated kidney? They I don't know. 10, 10 to or 12 20? years. No, 10 to 12. 12. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's not that long. And, and at least with, and that's, that sucks. It would be great if it were forever. Yeah. But at least then he's not dead. He would do dialysis. Yeah, or do another. Where, you know, a machine don't... would filter his blood. blood. And yeah. That's a pain because you got to do it three times a week. And, and you're all this on stuff. that. For all of these. Day, yeah. yeah, that's like its own thing. Yeah. But. You know, he's not. No, or it's not like a liver that. No, regenerates your toast. Itself. Well, I was gonna oh. say liver failure. You don't get a kidney. Oh. I mean, if you don't get a liver, liver. transplant, there is no dialysis for Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. Know, people die. Yeah. Ten to twelve. Okay. Ten to twelve. So and ha- if I mean, I'm hopeful that it will be longer because he's a healthy guy. He's yeah. always been healthy. And he's been taking care of himself. Taking care of himself, like probably good. better than me. <laughs> no. Imagine if you gave him a kidney and he was just like living poor if he was i would, would you be do? in his face <laughs> yeah my kidney deserves a better life yeah <laughs> yeah but luckily he's not that guy yeah no um, kidding yeah so if he does need one hopefully another family member will step up yeah i don't think time. you're gonna give him another one no <laughs> but if i had three if i was born with three i would oh i'll go in gosh. a second time i think one's enough I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. Go through the same scars. Okay, hang on for just a second. Let me push pause. Are there other things we want to ask her about this? Before I ask about the Christmas trees? You got into that. Did you want to do the book instead of the Christmas trees? You forgot about her reading. I think he wants to do the Christmas trees. Tell me in two minutes about the trees and then do your reading. Because we need to wrap it up. Yeah, let's do it. I can do that. Okay, so I still want to hear about... Two things. Tell me about your Christmas tree operation in a couple minutes, and then let's finish by you reading the story. Okay. How's that? Sounds good. Good.
All right, so the name of the company is called The Living Christmas Company, and it's where you can go online and buy a Christmas tree. We have Aleppo Pines, Monterey's. My big favorite is uh, the Blue Spruce. Blue Spruce. Mm -hmm. It reminds, reminds me of the Snoopy, um, you mm. know, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown Christmas tree? Yeah, it's a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. But it's a Christmas tree that I recognize as Christmas. Um, okay. Where you can then rent it for the holidays. So we um, deliver it to your house, and after the holidays, we pick it up. And so you no longer have to buy a cut tree. And this tree is actually alive. It's alive. You don't cut them. No. Deliver. It's no. actually an, an alive tree. In a pot that you must water so you to water keep it alive. So you water the pot, keep yes. the tree alive, mm -hmm. and you just drop them off and pick them up. And yeah. you don't kill any trees in the you process, don't kill but any you trees. get a Christmas tree. Yeah. I don't understand why people still do cut trees. That is brilliant. Ew. Thank you. I've never I heard of that. I didn't with it, but... Yeah, but you can take credit have. for it on my podcast. I should have. I feel like with the last name Christmas, I should own a Christmas tree farm. <laughs> but um, no. Um, so you work with this company? I work with this company because I believe in the mission. Because I don't believe... My, my parents didn't have... We maybe had one Christmas tree that I remembered when I was super young. Yeah. And then... Um, my mom was like, no, we're not doing this again. And so we begged and pleaded with our dad to the point where my dad built a Christmas tree out of like um, steel and like, my dad can build anything wow. out of steel and wire and frame and we kept it up because. Well, that's a really cool idea. So what's this website that people can find it at least in Living the Christmas, LA area? Livingchristmas.com. Livingchristmas.com. And, and if they were to Google this at their area, it would be like Living Christmas Tree. Mm -hmm, but we're only in LA. LA County. We do deliver to Orange County, but that's our so farthest maybe point. Maybe other places. Well, that's a really yeah. cool idea. It's I sustainable. Like I just don't understand. Like, for a tree that takes years to grow, why would you cut it for like three weeks? I'll tell you why. Weeks? Because in vacation, Chevy Chase went out and cut down a Christmas tree. That is why we feel like we have to do this. National thing. Lampoon, we, we want to blame it on them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, like, that's my idea. It's like, I got to get a tree. I guess this is the. Griswold, this is the family Christmas tree. I got to go chop one down and do it like that. Oh. I like your idea yeah. better. Yeah. I need to put that in some movie that inspires. Well, uh, this will be a great segue into the book because Harper Collins, a rep, reached out to us because they wrote a book called The Living, um, The <coughs> Christmas Tree Who Loved Trains. And it was mm -hmm. a Christmas tree that was planted and got dug up and it spent the holidays with the family and then the family um, transplanted it back into the ground talking about transplants is, is that oh it's so there's such a thing for you <laughs> so, so you guys put them back in the trees. ground after the pot um we don't but yes but somebody does yes yes oh, or if you wanted just... to keep it you know we'll we let you keep it um it's really hard to have living uh christmas trees donated in california because it's not a native plant mm. but a lot of people who have homes um they'll keep it plant them and try yeah. to make it work yeah which, what story do you have for us? Well, it's not. It'll be fun. Yeah, it's not a Christmas story. It's actually <laughs> the opposite, but it's called The Mouse Who Cried in Silence. I'm ready. So, do you want me to yeah. set it up? So, I wrote this story because I read an article about this eight year old girl who um, committed suicide because she was being bullied. And I thought, what a different world we're currently living in. Talking about that human connection. I um, like that. Yeah, so it really made me sad. And I wrote a story because I want people to know that they're not alone. I think we can all identify with sadness. In a child, I call it sadness, but in adults, it's depression. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're ever cured of depression. I think it's how you manage. We all are on this roller coaster ride. And so um, I'll read you The Master Cried in Silence. And all my stories start with Forever in a Day. Forever in a Day. There was a mouse named Bolo. He was average in size, average feet, average hands, average eyes, and average nose. Well, he was just plain average. Except for his fur, which was short and harsh and spotted all around. Oh, and the nick in his right ear that only he knew the secret as to how it got there. Here he sat, alone in his room, cheeks wet, stained with tears. He wept silently, for, the, for he did not want anyone to hear his sobs. He was ashamed to cry. He didn't know if he was upset or sad. He just knew that he didn't want the other mice to hear him cry when he was crying over things that he shouldn't be. It was such a bothersome thing. His nose leaked as if it too wanted to run away from him. Snivel, snivel, drippy dribble down his chin. He couldn't, wouldn't get up from his chair to go get a tissue from the bathroom. For fear, he didn't want anyone to hear him, him, hear him blow his nose. Then they'll know he was crying and then they would ask the dreaded why. He disliked that question. 
He himself didn't know why. His teensy wincy eyes jutted about the room for a shirt sleeve he could use, but they were all too dirty from his last bout of sobbing. His pillow, water coarse, etched full of saris, a tide of all the tears. So he sat in the dark, imagined, convinced of all the things that could have gone wrong and did, and wondered why it always happened, why it was always him that seemed to have all the problems. He started to question why he wasn't good enough. He felt worthless, empty inside. What could he have done differently so he could avoid feeling so alone in those moments of crying? He could hear his friends calling, but every time he heard his name Bolo, he got sadder than the last. He didn't want to bother his friends with his burden, especially since they fussed over him before. He never troubled them again. So they thought he was okay when really he was crying and hurting deep within. His head weighed heavy in his hands, fingers fidgeted back and forth, forth and back over his right ear. The room caved in on him. He needed space, he needed to breathe. He choked as he gulped down fresh air. He stumbled off the stool and pressed his ear against his bedroom door. He listened. He waited till silence greeted him from the other side. He opened the door just wide enough to squeeze his body on through. He saw his papa asleep in his chair, his sister's fur colored with paint as she drew a likeness of their father, for it was the only time she could get him not to move. He didn't have to see his mama to know where she was. Bolo inhale the blast of aroma, whiff, sniff, snuff, smack. He recognized the scent. Mama was cooking his favorite dish, five cheese souffle punched a lot of pack. He could feel it coming on, the bursting of tears. He snuck out the house and seen. Outside, Bolo went out of the way to remain hidden from his friends. He scurried to nearby low-growing bushes, five spots they were called, flowers bowl-shaped, snow-white petals with dark veins and dots. It was here amongst these plants he was lost to view. Hush, hush, out of sight he moved. He made his way to the graveyard. He laid, his, he laid to rest his weary self on Annabeth's tomb. He knew he wouldn't be disturbed. If there was ever anyone, they were too busy caught in their own misery. He felt safe to let go of his feelings. Hidden from the world, Bolo wept in silence. Tisk, 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 such a curse. How could he be so sad, he thought, when he has a mother and father and sister and friends who loved him? They wouldn't understand, and crying only, thing, only made things worse. He was afraid that they would judge him, and he was already trying the best he could. He recalled the things they've said. Try harder, be brave, don't be such a crybaby. Cheer up, things will be brighter in the morning. So he retreated. He went off into a corner and licked his wounds. On his own was how he healed himself. He had no choice but to cry in silence. The wind gave a whirl and the strangest sound cycloned around him. A loud whisper of weeping whistled within the wind. And if by cue, an inkling really, his ear crinkled and Bolo then tracked and traced the residence. The melody appeared to be coming from a tree which grew near a pond. Bolo stood in awe, swept in by its song. The tree was so tall it dominated the landscape. Something so much bigger than he was in such poor shape. The weeping tree had such an offbeat, a far cry from normal appearance, with its rounded drooping branches and strung out leaves. The color of its leaves ranged from a golden shade to a greenish yellow hue. Because of its size, its shape of its branches, and the lushness of its foliage, the willow created a natural-born oasis. There was one place the willow grew so close to the ground the bolo crept up its shrub. The water looked like tears as it dripped off the curved branches. He could see the tears the weeping willow cried, for where it lives is where it cries. Bolo's eyes followed the tear drop as it teetered, toppled, plopped, plunked down into the pond. Wrinkled, rippled a reflection swelled. Through, more, through the mirror of Bolo's mind, through all the tears that he cried, react reflected a reality of hope he sought to find. In a quivering voice, Bolo spoke. There are times when I feel as though nobody <coughs> knows what I'm going through. A billowy voice froths up from the service and answered him back. How sad it is. I too struggle with pain that almost overpowers me. Bolo quickly took a step back from the edge. Madness? No. It was his inner voice who talked him off the ledge. He confessed. Sometimes I just need a good cry, even if I don't know the reasons why. The voice from his reflection took care of it, saying, It's okay to cry. Crying is how your heart speaks when your lips can't explain the pain you feel. I salute you, courageous one. You are mighty within, and that's more than enough. It's no good to hold it all in. Bolo lets go of his rubbed red ear. I'm tired of feeling sick. I'm tired of missing things, of being different. Sometimes all I can do is lie in bed and hope to fall asleep before I fall apart. 
Bolo peered at himself through the water. Was this all wasted in vain, a shot in the dark? There was one outside of himself who knew how much she cried that day. With her branches, she wrapped Bolo in for a hug and her leaves tickled <coughs> his belly. An unfamiliar sound leaped from his lungs. He laughed so hard it hurt his tummy. Tears of joy? What an odd feeling. He squeaked and squeaked with glee, both him and his image glistening. The hour had somehow grown late. Night approached. Bolo bid his spirited willow adieu. Her song, what once sounded it like a weeping rang, like a lullaby in Bolo's ears. The willow's tune led him safely out the burying ground. He hurried back home, never thinking he was missed. He snuck back in from the way he escaped. He dried his eyes and straightened his back. His stomach groaned. He'd forgotten he hadn't eaten. The table was set, not one morsel taken. Mama, Papa, and sister, his family had waited. Bolo took his place seated. Three sets of eyes beamed back with warmth greeting. The most difficult things are not those seen and known, but those buried within his soul. The most painful tears he cried were the tears he cried alone. And that's the mouse who cried in silence. Oh, guys. Guys. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. That's yeah. wonderful. Thank you. I just, um, you know, there aren't that many stories that talk about sadness because I think a lot of us obviously want to remember moments of light, happiness, go lucky, especially when it comes to children because you want to protect their youth. Um, but there's some crazy stuff happening today. Like some eight year old girl got kidnapped from her mom. Um, they found her in a hotel room with, yeah, there's just a lot of shit in the world. Bad stuff. In the world. A lot of bad stuff. I remember my parents did all they could to protect me and my siblings from it. But I feel like now, even when as a parent, you're trying to do your best to protect, like the bad guys are there in broad daylight. They're not hang hanging out in the shadows. And I think even when, um, cause you know, bad kids were, Bad guys were for women. <laughs> Bad people were once children too. I think um, kids today, I don't know if it's because of, you know, you live your life on this social platform that if you don't portray it as you're winning, then you suck. Mm. And I think a lot of kids don't realize that's all bullshit. No mm. one's winning every day. Not even the wealthy or the people who seem the most happiest. Mm. Um, and I just want them to know that whenever you think you're alone, you're not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, and I didn't want to do a, a happy ending because like I mentioned earlier, there is no cure for depression. It's just how you manage, you know, how you manage it's a good mm -hmm. message i like it thanks yeah it's it's different because i've written christmas stories of course the you know what matters to a pig is a love story but i just felt that what yeah. matters to a pig yeah <laughs> what matters to a pig you should publish them children's book author yeah karina christmas working on it dr larry publish them and bring a book back we'll put it up on the rack i made dummy books i will um, maybe I'll get Harper Collins because I read their book that they sent with the Christmas tree who loved her and, uh, it sucked. You do one. You come back and <laughs> put it on my mantle. Okay. Thank you for being here. This was so good. Thank you for having me. We have a tradition on the show. Okay. Where the guest looks into the camera. Okay. And closes the show out. Okay. Whatever you want to say. Well, good night world. We'll see you on next week episode. Perfect. Okay. Is there, do you have social media? Where can people find you? Do you want them to go somewhere? Yeah, I want you to find me. Um, you'll have to request me because I'm not public, but you can find me at, on Instagram, Karina Christmas. I don't have Facebook. I haven't, I shut my Facebook down like four or five years ago. Okay. Um, Karina Christmas on just Instagram. Instagram. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for watching the show. I want you to screenshot or take a video of something and post it on social media and tag me, Dr. Larry Bouchard, what you liked. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts and the YouTube channel. And if you or someone you know has a moment that you'd like to hear on this show, reach out to me on social media, Dr. Larry Bouchard. We'd love to have him. And we will see you next time. <laughs>